All right, let's start this update with some improvements to sharing designs in Fusion 360. First, let's start by creating a shareable link to this design by right-clicking the design in the data panel. Previously, when someone created a shareable link, even if they were in the same project, they would open the design in a web browser, which would allow them to view the model. But if you chose to open it in Fusion 360, it would create a duplicate of that design. Well, that's not the case anymore. Today, this behavior is the same for people that you share with that are not in the project. But now in Fusion 360, if I'm in the same project, when I click on the link, it will open the actual design in a web browser, allowing me to comment, redline, or open that design in Fusion 360. This avoids creating duplicates of files to ensure the entire team that's in the project is working on the correct design. As you could tell, I share links to my designs all the time. It's now the easiest way to share files with internal and external stakeholders. But the Fusion 360 team wants to ensure you have control of your data. Security of your Fusion 360 data is one of our highest priorities. Previously, everyone in your team could share files through sharing a link, which could be dangerous to know which links have been shared to external stakeholders. As of this update, the admin of a team hub can disable share links to ensure that data doesn't get in the wrong hands. Now let's move on. If you have designs that you would like your customers to view, well, make sure to watch this part. When creating a share link from Fusion Team, you will get one extra option to embed your viewer in any website. Want to see it in action? Make sure to look at Kaching's What's New blog post, which will be linked in the description of this video to see all the details about everything added in this update. You may get a few laughs from Kaching's clever writing too. But if you scroll down, you'll find an example of Fusion 360 design we embedded in the post. Now you will get the option to open this design in Fusion 360. If you are working on projects that are crowdsourced or simply want your customers to view your products in 3D, this will be an essential workflow to share your designs with others. But now that we are talking about sharing, I'm going to share the mic over to Edwin, who is going to give us an update on electronics in Fusion 360. With the latest update of Fusion 360, the electronics editors now have hotkeys to optimize your design time. With hotkeys, you'll now be able to use single keystrokes to search or invoke commonly used commands. For this example, we press A to access the add command. To the long list of available PCB manual and interactive routing tools, you are now able to change trace width or using quick route options. With the addition of quick route guided, it is now possible for you to control width clearance, and predetermine the path of your traces. All this and more with Fusion 360. Whoa, that was sweet, Edwin. That guided routing looks like it's really going to save some time routing those traces. But this next part is going to blow your socks off. Now that Edwin has designed the board in Fusion 360, it's my turn to see if this is going to overheat in our sheet metal enclosure. First, this is a preview tool, so make sure to go to the Preferences under your name in the top right and turn on Electronics Cooling. Once enabled, we can switch to the Simulation Workspace and there will now be a new study type for Electronics Cooling. The team has done an excellent job simplifying complex CFD workflows to make this new functionality easy to use. Simply apply thermal loads on different bodies in your model, like these two chips that you would get from the manufacturer, then apply forced flow that would come from this fan and describe what ambient temperature where the design would be in operation. It's just that simple. Once set up, you send this study to the cloud. What once would have required an expensive hardware setup now can be offloaded so you can continue working. Even better, you could send multiple studies simultaneously to the cloud to evaluate different design alternatives. Once you get the results, you have all the tools you need to interrogate your results to ensure this meets your design requirements. Between different temperature and flow plots, section plots, surface probes, and more, you will have all the tools to find issues with your design earlier in the product development process. Now let's change paces a bit and look at a few updates to generative design. First on the docket is an update to the 2.5 axis manufacturing constraint. If you haven't had a chance to test out some of our new manufacturing constraints, make sure to try out this tech. The team has been working hard to implement some of your requests. In this update, you will now specify the minimum wall thickness that the generative algorithm will produce. If you've kept up with how quickly generative design in Fusion 360 is progressing, 
then you probably already know in the past year we've added artificial intelligence to classify different results based on visual similarity and the outcomes now have a cost estimation based on the cost estimation powered by a priori and for those of you who didn't know that well now you do but as we added these awesome pieces of functionality they would only work for new studies well not anymore now visual similarity and cost estimations will show up for previously run generative studies finally when viewing an outcome you can now show the preserves obstacles starting geometry independently from each other this will give you insights into how you set up your generative studies last but not least we have an update for those t-spline masters out there first here's a tip when you're in the edit form command switch the selection filter to vertices you will now notice a few new colors appear when in this secret mode these green dots are the tangent handles from this creased edge that gives a highlight for this reciprocating saw you select this handle and manipulate it with a triad but now in this release you can use the similar selection tools on tangency handles just like other selections for example you can hold command on mac or control on windows and select the next tangency handle by double clicking and it will automatically select the entire loop this will save you many tricky selections of a chain to adjust how this t-spline body would come out all together on this crease well that's it for this week make sure to check out the what's new for manufacturing for fusion 360 as well for april you'll find the link to that video in the description until next time have a great time fusioning